ready are deployed. Let's verify that. kubectl get nodes. I have the master in the ready state. How do we uh, add the worker nodes to the Kubernetes cluster or additional servers to the Kubernetes cluster? Let's see that. In my case, I have two more virtual machines that I want to use to be part of my cluster, the cube node one and the cube node two. OK, so cube node one has an IP address uh, 192.168.100.12. And the cube node 2 has an IP address 192.168.100.13. I'm going to make a SSH connection from the master from the party to connect to node 1 and node 2 and perform the steps. So as it is identical steps that I will have to do it on node 1 and node 2, I will try to do it simultaneously. What I will do is I will uh, open up the duplicate session. and SSH to cube dash node one. And I ha I will have one more duplicate session. And I will SSH to cube dash node two. So I will have my lab guide side by side and perform these steps simultaneously on node one and node two. So first thing to ensure they have the correct host name and which is already there. Otherwise also there's no harm running these commands again. Node one, but on the node two, I need to change the host name to node two. And then I need to ensure my node one and node two is able to communicate with each other using not only IP, also using host name. I will update my host file with that. Disable the SC Linux. These all steps mostly the repeated what we performed on the master. I will try to cut down the explanation and uh, perform those steps. I will stress more on only some of the new commands. Let's disable the <clears throat> firewall. And both of the nodes. Let's enable and start the Chronity service. Let's synchronize the time from the public time sources. Let's install the basic packages which are needed. Both on node one and node two. Let's turn the swap off as Kubernetes does not support the virtual memory. Let me comment the entry if any for the FS tab for the swap in FS tab. Let me load the module needed for the bridging. Let me enable the IP forwarding feature. And add the persistence to that setting. Let's verify if there is any packages to be updated and update them both on node one and node two. Once they are updated, we're going to reboot both node one and node two.
It may take a couple of minutes. It's taking a bit more time than expected. It depends on the internet speed and how many packages to say how much time it generally takes. Looks like we are almost there. going to cross verify if everything is done. Yeah, let's reboot it. Put the node 2 as well as node 1. Once they are back, we're going to SSH again and continue the remaining steps. The very first remaining step that we want to do is see if there is department and build up already installed, remove those two packages. So Podman is also a container management tool that CentOS recommends to be used instead of Docker. But we have decided to have the Docker installed and there cannot be two container runtime interfaces running on the same server. So we want to remove department to have the Docker installed. Let me try to SSH back to the node one and remove the podman. Let me switch to node two and do a SSH back to node two and remove the podman. Install and configure the Docker repository both on node two and node one install the Docker packages on both of the nodes. Make a directory and create a custom configuration file. Once the installation of those packages is completed. Create a directory and create a directory on node one. Let's create it on node two as well. Create that custom configuration file, which I explained to you during the master deployment. It's the same process what we are repeating for the node one and node two as well. If you ask me how much of the difference between the steps for the master and the worker node, there's a least difference, meaning instead of doing the QBDM in it, we are doing a, a QBDM join. Let's install the Kubernetes specific packages. And let's lock the package versions for both Kubernetes and Docker.
let's enable and start the Docker. Both are node one and node two. Let's also enable and start the kubelet. And now we need a join command. If you remember during the kubeadm init on the master, I took a note of the token that was generated during the bootstrap process. I need that command. Let me go to node one and run that command. So it's going to join the master. It says the node has joined the cluster. I can bring you the master terminal and show you. There will be one more node added, but it is still not not in a ready state. I can wait for that to come up in the ready state. It would just take a minute or two. There you go, but it says it does not have any role. So either you can have a master role if you are looking for multi master setup or you can assign the node role. How to assign the role? Let me show you that. I just can run the command on the master. It is written cube master. OK, cube cattle label the node, the name of the node and the role that you want to have. So if you decide to have that also as a master, you need to put master. In my case, I want that to be a node role. Now if I check kubectl get nodes, I have the worker node successfully added. Even if you want to add the master, it is the same process. Instead, you will have the role as master, but the steps are same. Now, assume you did not take on a note of this token. How do you get this token is one question. Second, this token is only valid for 24 hours. And what if I want to add worker node after 24 hours? You can generate a new token. OK, let me show you how that can be done. We have given you the step also how to generate a new token. Let me go to my master and run this command, which will generate me the new token. And I'm saying this token to be valid for three hours. Otherwise, by default, it is 24 hours. It gave me the new token. And what happens to the old token? You can still list that token. Cube cat. Is QBADM, sorry, QBADM token list token. You see, there are two tokens one valid for more 23 hours, one valid only for some two hours and something. Okay, so this is a token that is generated during the bootstrap process, during the QBADM process. This, the first one in the list, is what we generated. No problem, we'll come back for that discussion. So right now we also know how to generate a token. So we have captured that token. Let's go to node two and use the new token that we generated to, to join the cluster. Okay, it has a message. This node has joined the cluster successfully. Now let's go to master and see if that node is part of the cluster. Cube cattle get nodes. Yes, it is, but it will take a bit of time to come into a ready state. OK, it is in the ready state, but it does not have a role. And now let's go ahead and have a role of a node to that server. But this is not a node one that we want to have a role. Instead, it is the node two. Now when I do a cube cattle get nodes, I have the one master and two worker nodes. This is a setup that I uh, used when I started my demonstration and I've taken you to that state. But 
this is just the deploying the Kubernetes cluster. But CKA and CKAD expect you to not deploying the Kubernetes cluster alone, also deploying the applications, creating the services, creating the volumes, uh, which is persistent volume, persistent volume claims, stateful sets. There's a lot of, lot of content that you need to know. So I'm trying to make you understand, and I'm trying to promote myself that I teach the full fledged course on CKA yeah. and CKAD focused if you are interested.